Midwest from always there. She was trying to harmonize with her mom. <laughs> We're still in that learning process. Praise God. For just a few moments, I want to look at the Word of God. And I appreciate everybody giving. I know Sister Dietrich was going to plan on going to David. And, uh, we missed them tonight. But we appreciate those who share the secret in their everything. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter number 22, and I want to look for just a few moments. I don't want to be lengthy tonight. I know that with that other's minister. Once again, good to have our brother here with us, Jason, and then good to have each one of you folks here with us this evening. Amen. Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 13. I, I love what the Word of God shares with us. Remember, it's just come past that time where the disciples saw Jesus crucified before their eyes. As we will later read in the text, uh, He's been buried in that borrowed tomb. Uh, they're, they're very disillusioned. They're, they forgot the promises of God. Uh, they're just they're heartbroken. Uh, where they were once on fire for God, they're no longer there any longer. And so they're talking about all the events that has transpired. And the Bible says in verse number 13, And behold, uh, two of them, we know Cleopas is one, we'll find out a little later uh, that, that that is him. Uh, uh, most think that the other disciple was Luke because he's writing the Gospel. He does not reference himself. Uh, however, uh, you know, we, we don't have great determination, but that's what most feel. The Bible says they went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, and that's about seven miles. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. They had a lot of conversation going on. Jesus had been crucified. They watched their, 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 their Rabboni, the Master. Uh, they watched the Messiah die. They were just disillusioned. It didn't turn out the way that they had anticipated and expected things to happen. Uh, and so as they're talking, they're, they're giving the testimonies of what's happening at, at, at the crucifixion. Uh, they talked and heard the Lamb see about what's happening at the tomb and how there was an angelic visitation there. Uh, so all this is going on in their conversation. The Bible says that as it came to pass, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus Himself drew near and went with them. Not an unusual thing. This was a very highly populated place where they walked. Can you imagine it being like R209 where there's lots of vehicles going up and down? However, they didn't commute that way. They, they commuted by foot. So, so it's, it's not uh, 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 unusual for someone to be traveling along. There's heavy traffic. And, but they didn't realize. They just weren't paying attention. They didn't recognize Jesus. The Bible says their eyes were beholden that they should not know Him. And he said unto them, What manner of communion are, are, are these that you have one to another as you walk and, 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 and are sad? He, he notices that they are sad. And one of them, whose, whose name, name was Cleopas, answered, uh, said unto him, and I want you to imagine this in a very sarcastic voice. Uh, are, you not a, are, are, you, uh, are you only a stranger to Jerusalem? Have you not known that things have come to pass there in these days? Man, man come on. Are you, are, are you clueless? Don't you know what's happening? I mean, it's the buzz of the town. Uh, why else would we be talking? What else is there to talk about? Why are we sad? I mean, come on, you got to be kidding me. And they said unto him, And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and, 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 and word before God and all the people, how the chief priests and, 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 and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and, and crucified him. But we trusted uh, that it had been he which, which, which should redeem Israel. They're, they're disappointed. I mean, they walked with Him. They talked with Him. They loved Him. They were committed to Him. Uh, everything that's happening. Verse number 22. Yea, a certain woman also of our company uh, made us astonished which were uh, 
where earlier at, at, at the sepulcher, when they found not his body, they came saying that they had uh, also seen a vision of angels uh, which said uh, that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found uh, it, it even as the woman had said, but him they saw not. And he said unto them, O fools, or foolish is what he's saying, O foolish men, slow to heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Sometimes we're no different, if I may lay what will be clear this. We're, we're no different. We're very slow to respond to the promises of God. We easily forget your rights to Beth. We get in a routine and God has helped us, but we don't expect any more. We don't expect any more by diagnosis. We don't expect any more problems. And uh, when they do come, sometimes it's easy to be overtaken by those things because, Sister Tina, we're just not prepared. And we just we forgot who God is and what His promises are all about. Ought not Christ have suffered these things and the enter into His glory and being at Moses and all the prophets? The Bible says He expounded unto them all the Scriptures, the things concerning Himself, and they drew nigh unto the village whether they were, and He made as though He would have gone farther. Let me just stop right there. So here it is, Jesus is talking to Luke and Cleopas, and, 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 and He shares with them the Scriptures, everything from Genesis, things about Moses, everything about the prophets and what the prophets have prophesied. There they are, Sister Doc, they're walking along, and it was as if Jesus wanted to go farther. Amen. I wonder if that is in us sometimes, Brother Walt. Amen. Jesus would like to go a little further, but we say this is enough. I'm stopping here. I'm camping here. I want to tell you, Jesus wants to go all the way with you. Amen. Jesus has a journey for us. Amen. Don't stop short of what God has for you. Amen. It was asked if Brother Doug, he wanted to go farther, but we were at our destination. The Bible says, but they constrained him. The good news is although he wanted to go farther, and maybe they should have gone farther with him, but they constrained him, come, stay, stay here. And so he did. I wonder if us in our life, are we constraining God to no, just stay with him? God will die with him. God, I need you to go home. They saw the details of the day being far spent. He went and he tarried with them. The Bible says it as it came to pass. He said, meet with them. And he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. I want to tell you that this is so symbolic here that he takes and he breaks and he blesses and he gives. Sister Beth, we look at that and we see it being bread. But that's not right. That's your life. That's my life. God takes and He breaks it. And He blesses it. And it becomes to others a blessing because it's broken and it's blessed. That's the unexplainable things that happen in our life. The things that we don't like. The things that we don't want. But God says, you're broken. But I'm blessing you. And it gives to others. Tonight I want to be reminded that Christ, when we are broken, wants to bless our life to be a blessing to others. And the Bible says, and their eyes were open, and they knew it was Him. And He vanished off their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while well, he talked with us by the way? And he opened to us the scriptures. I just want to stop there for a moment. Here are these disciples, and one time they were excited. They were excited. Like, this is Jesus. Come see the man who told me all I've ever done. The Samaritan woman said to the disciples, They wanted to bring peace to people of Jesus. 
Come see a man and the miracles he does. I mean, their heart is burning within them because of who he is and what he's done. I mean, they're excited, Brother Dennis. They've seen him uh, turn water to wine. They watched him as he touched the man with the withered hand and it's healed. They watched the, uh, the, 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 the woman with her, her dead son. He touches her dead son and speaks the word. He's raised from the dead. They watched as he's raised Lazarus from the dead. They're excited. Their heart is burning within them because they know who God is and what God has done. But all of a sudden, in the middle of life, what was once hot now becomes chill. Jesus, He's crucified. The hopes and dreams for Israel is laid in the tomb. It's easy in the middle of life and even in the middle of serving God to get chill. Are you with me tonight? Mm -hmm. It's easy to get chilled in the middle of serving God. Where once we're excited and once we're, we're thrilled about the things of God, but when life doesn't go the way that we want, God doesn't move the way that we want, when revival is burning fires high, and we're not seeing things the way that we used to, and then when, when life changes, it's easy to get frustrated. And somewhere in the middle of it, it's easy to allow our lives to become chilled. And that's exactly where Luke and Cleopas were. They were talking and they, they were sad. He saw it on their countenance because of what was true inspiring and what was happening. Uh, they were frustrated. Uh, they were disillusioned. Uh, they, they were uh, dispersed as sheep without a shepherd, Jesus said. Uh, they, they were just in a bad state. They were cold. But all of a sudden, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. He began to come and he talked with them and expounded Scripture to them. They compelled him to stay a while. And he broke bread. And in the breaking, didn't our hearts burn within us? Because Jesus was in our midst. Are you feeling like life has cooled you off? Like maybe you're not where you used to be. The fires for your... Your, your fervency for God just isn't there the way it was. I want to tell you what will change it. A walk, a talk, and a sitting down with Jesus will change it. Did not our hearts burn with us? How many of you want God to burn in your heart? I don't know your heart, only you know the condition. My wife has this little meat in my this digital thing, and then we use it in our house. You know, I'm certainly not a cook. So, especially when I'm cooking meat, I don't know what, I don't know, serve raw meat to myself or anybody else. So we get that thermometer out and we stick it in there, and you know, I watch it as it climbs, and sometimes it doesn't get there. Sometimes I like it even a little bit further, it just makes me feel better. Can we get the spiritual thermometer out? And would you apply it to your heart tonight? And is it warmed up to what it should be? Or has the furnace died off? I'm not going to give an all call, but with every head bowed and every head closed, I want to set you up. In these closing moments of tonight, I want you to search your heart. Are you this fervent? as you should be. Or has sadness, disillusion, the talking of events roundabouts have taken you to a place where you've cooled off. Tonight, the next couple of minutes right where you sit, would you just talk with God and say, God, if you want to go a little further, I'll walk with you. God, if we have to stop here, stop. Break me. Bless me. Oh, I'm Amen. Just take a few moments to talk to the Lord in prayer tonight. Amen. No fanfare of you. Think I'm going to step back and talk to the Lord myself. Would you just talk to God and say, God, let my heart burn with it tonight. Let it burn with it as you open the scriptures.